What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today, we've got Glen Elgin, 12 year old. Stick around. So we've got a cool one with us today. We've got our Glen Elgin 12 here. Glen Elgin is a Speyside distillery and it's not a distillery that gets a lot of love. Not a lot of people talk about it. Uh, now this is owned by Diageo and seemingly it's not popular enough to be one of the main players in their portfolio. But oppositely, I think it's not obscure enough to be one of these like one-off flora and fauna type bottlings either. Apparently Glen Elgin is mostly a workhorse distillery, which is to say the majority of the whiskey they produce finds its way into blends, uh, namely the White Horse blend. Of course, they do have special releases, one-off whiskeys. Uh, I think they put out an 18-year-old a few years back, but generally speaking, we just have the 12-year-old as their core range, as I mentioned. Uh, luckily, it is pretty widely available in IBs or independent bottlings, so if you want to sample more from Glen Elgin, there is plenty of it out there for you to find. Diageo does make most of their money from the blends and I guess they're just happy with the 12 year old as it is so I guess they have an if it ain't broke type of approach to this distillery. Now one interesting aspect about Glen Elgin is that this is made using worm tubs. Worm tubs are these copper tubes that extend out from the line arms. Um, line arms are those big bendy bits that you see at the top of stills. So uh, they extend out into our worm tubs. The worm tubs are basically there to cool the vapors out of the still and condense our whiskey. However, worm tubs are notoriously difficult to build, install, clean, and maintain, so most distilleries aren't going to bother with them. But those that do tend to have a fuller, beefier spirit. Um, I think of the 120 plus distilleries that we have in operation in Scotland at the moment, something like less than 20 of them actually use worm tubs. Some famous examples of distilleries that use worm tubs would be stuff like Mortlock, Edredor, and Talisker. So, yeah, kind of an interesting aspect of distilling. Um, I can toss in a link down below, you can click on that if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, anyway, yeah, our Elgin here, made with worm tubs so we can expect a heftier spirit. Let's find out, why don't we hop into our review here, see what this whiskey's all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So this is an affordable, low profile product from Diageo, let's not get our hopes up here. Our ABV comes in at 43%, this is going to be chill filtered, and it's a colored whiskey. So we can't make out the color of our whiskey and it wouldn't matter anyway. We've got a tinted bottle and we've got E158 inside the bottle, so never mind that. For the label, I do like it. I think it looks good. It's got kind of like this old school vibe to it. They're definitely going for a craft look. Um, I like the simple color scheme that they've got. So yeah, presentation is good. I'll give this one maybe a solid four out of five. Obviously our specs are nothing to brag about, so they're not mentioned here. Uh, it does talk about being handcrafted a couple times on the label, okay. Um, our blurb down here is a mix of useful and useless information. They start off by talking about birds that fly around the distillery. Cool. But then they go on to talk about the warm tubs a little bit. So yeah, overall, I think it's a good look. Kind of looks like Lagavulin's chubby cousin or something. Um, sits nicely on the shelf. Let's check out our nose. So fruity and tart. Honey, fruitcake. Sultanas, uh, marmalade, marzipan. We have lemon in black tea. We have some ginger. We have some sandalwood and these faint earthy, almost mushroomy type notes. Let's try our palette. Okay, a very thick mouth coating texture. So thick, sweet, and quite crisp. Uh, we're gonna start off with these really fat, juicy, malty notes in here. Uh, we have caramelized sugar, uh, we have salted peanut brittle, some engine oil, some pecans, very crisp apple, and maybe some faint cumin. Let's try the finish. Mm. So more of that malt. Fat, juicy, malty notes. I like those malt drinks that you get. Uh, we got raisins, dates, crisp pears, this light kind of tobacco note in here. There's some tea, there's some earth, and kind of like, like musty old books. Now this is a short to medium finish, but pretty decent intensity. 
Okay, so this is a surprisingly big whiskey, much bigger than that 43% would suggest. We have some big flavors in here with a thick, full, rich mouthfeel, uh, very mouth coating with a kind of a malt forward profile. Now, it's not doing anything edgy, there's nothing weird or funky about this whiskey, but it is still something that's pretty unique. Now, some people seem to really like this whiskey, but oppositely, I've seen quite a few scathing reviews online. A lot of people have called this kind of boring or generic. I kind of see where they're coming from with that, but uh, I completely disagree. I think this whiskey is an absolute standout. It's a beautiful whiskey. Again, you really don't feel that low ABV, and you've got a great texture here. Now, I cover specs on my channel because it is useful information and it does reflect on the quality of our whiskey. Generally speaking, the fewer checks that we have on my little board up there, the less we're likely to get out of the whiskey. But I should stress that that's not always the case. There are exceptions to be made. Now, I do understand those of you out there who refuse to buy chill filtered, colored, low ABV whiskey. I do understand that anytime we're buying a product, we are voting with our wallets. But as I've said in the past, if I completely stayed away from those kinds of whiskeys, you know, chill filtered, colored, low ABV, I would be denying myself access to some real beauties out there. That being said, I'll take a good whiskey at 43%. Anything at 40% can basically fuck off. Anyway, this is a beautiful whiskey. My score for this one is gonna be 89. Uh, you have those fat, juicy multi notes. They offer a really nice counterpoint to those crisp, apple pear notes. Uh, you also have some really cool notes in here like earth and those musty old books. They work really well. And finally, that mouthfeel. If you like really mouth-coating whiskeys, like for example, what you'd find in Bonahabin 12, you should like this one. So this is recommended for people who like their Speyside whiskeys. It's recommended for people who like malt forward profiles. And it's recommended for people who like thick textured mouth-coating whiskeys. It's also proof that chill filtered, colored, low ABV whiskeys can sometimes work. Of course, this would be a hell of a lot better if it was naturally presented at 46%, but I am happy to drink it as it is. There's already a lot to love about this whiskey. Honestly, I could carry on about it. I don't understand why it's not more popular. I think it's a great introduction to the Elgin Distillery. It really is a shame that we don't get more releases from them. That would be something that I'd absolutely love to see. We've definitely got some really good value here. This one comes in at an entry level price tag and the whiskey you're getting is worth every penny. It's a delicious whiskey at a very affordable price. So yeah, I've gushed over this one enough. Uh, go check it out. Okay, that's it for me today guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried Glen Elgin 12 year old? What were your thoughts? Finally, down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye guys.